I met Justin Morrison for the first time uh, 30 years ago in London. I was there and I was visiting just an exhibition with uh, many different uh, products and I felt in love soon with the Sinking Man Chair, the first prototype of this uh, product designed by Jasper Morrison. So I met him and I invited him to come to Italy to visit the Capellini company and to see if there was the possibility to work together. And uh, starting from that product we really create a strong cooperation and a friendship. You know, to work with Jasper is always very, very interesting because uh, he likes very much to work on details and uh, during all these uh, 30 years we made a lot of research in terms of shapes, in terms of materials and I think that simplicity and elegance are the most important thing for Jasper. I think that we don't need of many words uh, to explain just a Jasper Morrison uh, product. And I think that the nice thing is that uh, Jasper is not creating best sellers but is creating long sellers. We see now that some products that Jasper designed maybe 20, 25 years ago are still very, very good. And I think that this is very important because it's a sort of guarantee for the market for the end consumer. People, if they see one product into the market after 20 years, they see wow. Uh, they think that if this product is still in the market, this cause is good. So, really, this fantastic friendship is uh, still very, very strong, and we are working on some new projects for the future. And for sure, I think that our idea is uh, to try to create for the future with Marzon some new classics of contemporary design. For a long time after I noticed an antique chair with its seat missing outside a shop, I had the idea to do a chair consisting only of structural elements. Many sketches later I arrived at an approximation of the final shape, which included two small tables on the end of the arms and an exotic assembly of curved metal work. It was to be called the drinking man chair. On my way back from a tobacconist shop with a packet of pipe cleaners to make a model with, I noticed the slogan The Thinking Man Smoke on the packet, which I quickly adapted as a more sophisticated title. Later on, with the prototype in front of me, destined for a show in Japan, I added the dimensions as a kind of surrogate decoration. Z. Varam exhibited it in London at his showroom, and Giulio Cappellini, seeing it there, contacted me about producing it. That's how I got started with Cappellini. He and Sheridan Copley in London were the first manufacturers to show interest in what I was doing. I intended to have the three bottles hand blown. But as there were no glass blowers working in Berlin at the time, I found the only way to do them was to take ordinary wine bottles and have them manipulated, which in the end was far more interesting. It seemed to say, look how beautiful an ordinary bottle is, better than things which are designed. began with the thought to do a comfortable low chair with as little volume as possible. I have always admired Paul Kera Home PK22 chair for its reduction of materials and the elegance of its concept, but having lived with it for a few years, I was aware that an element of comfort was missing. The prototypes of our first drawings were not particularly exciting, consisting of more or less traditional upholstery on a wireframe base. After some refinement, I still wasn't sure it really had anything going for it, but on my way back to London I noticed the profile of an airport bench, and that, combined with the memory of having seen some molded leather forms, gave me the concept. After that it was easy. Cappellini found a company making car seats who could press leather and most kinds of fabric. I played around with various shapes for the back, and finally a plywood panel was molded to the required profile cut to shape and the upholstery stitched over it. 
The design owes much to Cappellini's upholstery skills, because if it hadn't been done perfectly, it wouldn't have been any good at all. With the Lopez chair resolved and two or three weeks to go before the Milan Fair, I sketched the dining chair during lunch with Giulio Cappellini. We were already excited by the good results we had achieved with the press leather, and iPad came out of that excitement. We drew it up back in London and it was prototyped in a week. We made some adjustments and Stefano Barbazza managed to have a finished prototype made overnight so it would be ready for the fair. Only in Brianza, a region north of Milan, which accounts for almost all the production of the best Italian furniture companies, do you find such fanatical devotion to design, quality and technical innovation, and nowhere else is the art of the close finish so perfected. Chair family involved more than the usual time and investment of a typical Cappellini project and a considerable number of prototypes. The sales of Cappellini had been migrating from the domestic market towards sales to more public spaces, like hotels, office building lobbies, airline lounges, and Giulio Cappellini asked me one day to consider a project for executive desk chairs. Adapting upholstered pet technology that we had developed for the low pet and high pet chairs in 1999. I developed a shape for plywood shells for three types of desk chair with different backrest heights and a lounge chair, which were then upholstered with the molded pads. I think I'm very lucky in having found Cappellini. In meeting Giulio, I was lucky enough to find somebody with a vision very close to my own, and I think still today we have a very good communication on the level of what the project should be which kind of pieces Cappellini should be producing, the general atmosphere which the collection represents. <laughs>